Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Johnson back again with some more of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And today, instead of a Bible story to explain it, I'm going to use pictures of people from our church, real people that I know, people who are friends. And so, let me take Paul's letter, and we'll undo the string, so we can see what new things Paul has to tell us today. And remember, even though it's my voice you hear, it's as if Paul is writing these letters to us. And remember last week, we talked about how people had, were not friends together, they thought they were better than other people because they were dead on the inside. But then Paul wrote, now that Jesus has come and you all love him, you can be friends because you all know that Jesus died for all of you and you all believe the same about who Jesus is. You are all important because you are all part of God's family. And this is the new part for today. So, um, God has special jobs for each of us. Did you know that, boys and girls? God has special jobs for each of us. Jesus is the one who makes us strong enough to do them so that we can work together to show God's love to the people around us. Wow, special jobs. Let's come over to the story pictures now. I'm going to use the pictures that I used last week, but I will also add in pictures of people that are real people in our church today. Come with me. This first picture from last week, boys and girls, is one of Jesus' apostles, one of his special helpers who is telling the other people what God's word says, what it means, and then how they should live if they really believe that part of God's word. It was a very, very important job. It still is today. If the pastors, the preachers, the ones who are explaining God's word, if they don't get it right, if they don't tell us right, then we won't know it right and we won't know how to live the way God wants us to live. Yes, we can read it for ourselves, and we do, but sometimes there are things that need extra explaining, and that's what these men do very, very well. In our church, we have two men who are doing that. Our senior pastor, Pastor Tracy, here in the blue shirt, and his new helper, Pastor Andrew, in the white shirt. These men have read and studied God's word a lot, and they take their job very seriously. They know it's very, very important that they tell us the right things about what God's word says and what it means and how we should live. Right now, they are telling us, the grown-ups and your older brothers and sisters, if they're watching it on uh, either at church or on the, t uh, the computer screen, they are telling us what Paul's letter to the Ephesians means. So just like I read it to you, and then we, I show pictures to help explain it, these men will read it to us and then help us to understand better what it means and how Jesus wants us to live. Let's go on to the rest of the pictures, and we'll hear about some of the things that Paul's letter to the Ephesians is talking about. Loving people, caring about people, sharing things, making sure that people have what they need, and doing it because we love them, because Jesus loves them, and we love him. Do you remember this picture from last week, boys and girls, where people are being friendly, not angry, where people are loving each other as just as good as they are? and not thinking that they're better than other people? How about these people who are showing love to people that they're meeting? People who are caring about other people. We have people in our church who do this too. If you walk into the office part of our church, you will see Miss Jen, probably at the desk, or if it's her day off, you might see Mrs. Jones there. Look at the smiles on their faces. Their job is to answer the phones 
and make people feel welcome in the church. Make people feel like we really want you to be here and we're happy to help you. When Mr. Johnson and I would come into the church service, we would often see Mr. Alvarado or Mr. Chun at the desk, the welcome desk, sometimes very close to the door. They always had big smiles when they saw their friends, but more importantly, they had big smiles for anyone who was coming in the door who might be brand new to our church. Sometimes it's a little strange coming into a, the door of a new church where you don't know where anything is. It might even feel a little scary sometimes. But Mr. Alvarado and Mr. Chun always have smiles on their faces to help new people feel at home. If they need to know where anything is, they can tell them. It's nice to feel welcome. This next picture from last week is a picture of people praying together. They are talking to God. Maybe there's a problem. Maybe they're thanking God for something happy or very special. Maybe there's something sad. We don't know. We can't tell from looking at this picture. But they know that God is listening to them because he always, always listens when his people are talking to him. We have people in our church who help other people pray too. This is Mr. and Mrs. Dawkins. And we would see them very often after church, standing by the back door where people would go out and they would be asking people if they needed to be prayed for. And people would. They would tell them if there was something happy or sad or if there was a problem, and Mr. and Mrs. Dawkins were always happy to take the time and pray for them. I have other friends, Mr. and Mrs. McDonald, and they were praying for people too. I don't have their pictures, so I'm sorry I can't show you their faces. But again, they stood by the door every week, and they were happy to pray for people, especially if they had problems. There's another picture from last week. This is of a man sharing some bread with a, a young boy who doesn't have any bread. We have problems sometimes in our church too. Sometimes it's food that people need, but sometimes it's other things. Maybe they need a ride to the doctor's office, or maybe something's broken in their house and they need help fixing it. These two men are part of many people who have helped with those kinds of things. This is Mr. Lamb and this is Mr. Johnson. Yes, the Mr. Johnson from my house. Whenever they would hear about problems that people would tell them, they would let a team of people know. They would send out an email or a phone call and say, someone has need of food, can you make a dinner? Or someone has a hole in their wall can we help to fix their wall? Or someone's car has broken down. Can someone help fix their car? Can someone give them a ride to the doctors? All kinds of different things. And Mr. Lamb and Mr. Johnson would tell the rest of us what needed to be done and who needed the help. And we would be happy to do that. These are the last two pictures from last week, boys and girls. Do you remember this one? Here's a man bringing a bag of money right here. You can see it in his hand. And he's going to give it to the helpers and tell them, this is some extra money that I have. Please use it for anyone who needs money who doesn't have it. And then they would save that money in a special place. And then when people did come in, like I said, maybe this lady needed food or new clothes or here's an older man, maybe he's not able to work anymore because he's too old to work safely. Maybe these people needed money for a special place to live. We don't know what all the needs were, but they would open up the special place and they would give out the money so that people would not be poor. They would be able to have the money that they need to buy the things that they needed. Again, in our church, we have someone who has done this for a long time. This is Mrs. Dawkins again. 
the same Mrs. Dawkins who prayed with her husband. She and some other people would find out when people needed extra money and they would look at, at what the people said. How much money do they need? How much do we have? How much can we give them? And she loves people so much because she loves Jesus so much. She was happy to take that job and take the time to make sure that people had what they needed. How nice to know that we are cared for like that in our church. But you know, <clears throat> it's not just Mrs. Dawkins. It's not just Mr. Lamb and Mr. Johnson or Mr. and Mrs. McDonald or Mr. Dawkins or Miss Jen or Mrs. Jones or Mr. Ricardo Alvarado or Mr. Chun. They are not the only people in our church who do these kinds of things. Look at this picture. This is the last one I have for us for today. <clears throat> what a lot of people. Look at this. I'll bring the camera in close. There are people here. There are people here. All the way across the building, there are people. Lots of people. This is our church. The walls and the windows and the lights that you see here. This is just the building, boys and girls. The building doesn't take care of people. The building doesn't pray with people or give them money or give them food. It's the people inside. We are the ones who are the church. We are the ones who give our money. We are the ones who cook dinners for people or give them rides to the doctors or fix holes in their walls if they need it. We are the people who buy them groceries if they need it or if they're too sick to go to the grocery store, we buy the groceries and bring it back to them. We are the people who give the money so that when people need extra money, they can get it. It's these people right here, all the people in this building who love other people because they love Jesus and they know that he loves them that much that they need to do that for other people as well. And they are happy to help. Thank you, God, for giving us a church where people might do different jobs, but it all works together to show that we love Jesus. Amen. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sin. He rose again and he wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. <clears throat> All right, now let's bring the camera closer so you can watch my mouth. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sin. He rose again and he wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. Let's add in the clapping on this one. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sins. He rose again and he wants
wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. I hope you remember this song, boys and girls, and everything else that we've learned this week. Until next time, bye-bye.